An intriguing aspect of statistics explain why surpassing an investing benchmark is often a daunting task. To illustrate this, imagine flipping a coin. On average, you'd predict the outcome correctly about half the time, right? However, recent data from the Bank of America reveals that active fund managers globally, despite their collective expertise, are not hitting this mark. In fact, a meager 19% manage to beat their respective benchmarks. And remember, these are the experts you give your money to. This leads us to question, how could a group of professionals, so adept in their field, fail to deliver anticipated outcomes? One reason it seems is the difficulty in competing with passive investing, a reality that's perhaps underestimated due to a certain effect. I came across an intriguing paper written by a group of academics. This paper threw light on a peculiar aspect of the stock market, where the distribution of returns tends to be extremely unbalanced. It argued that equity benchmarks often rely heavily on significant gains from just a few stocks. As a result, most managers who miss out on these stocks are left trailing behind, unable to catch up with their benchmarks. One might intuitively think that picking stocks at random would set the starting line at zero. However, empirical evidence suggests otherwise. Random selection often puts you behind the starting line. Interestingly, the chronic underperformance of active managers is a mystery that had been, to a large extent, already unraveled. A 1998 study titled Why Active Managers Underperform the S&P 500, the Impact of Size and Skewness, dug deep into this issue. Among the authors was Richard Shockley, an associate professor of finance at Indiana University. Shockley and his team noticed that the costs associated with managing a portfolio and the drag from manager fees couldn't fully explain the consistent underperformance of mutual funds. Instead, they pinpointed a concept called positive skew as the more probable culprit. These insights carry significant implication for a range of subjects. From the evaluation of active funds to the prospect of a decline in passive investing popularity. It even shines a light on the optimal number of stocks a manager can own before unintentionally mimicking an index. A phenomenon often referred to as closet indexing. Rarely is the skewness taken into account in the active versus passive investment style debates, nor is it commonly used to explain the poor annual performance of a fund manager. In a series of interviews they conducted, it was clear that many fund managers weren't well versed in the concept of equity market skewness or its effect on relative performance against the benchmark. As Shockley admitted, their insightful paper hadn't reached the intended audience. The complexity of the mathematical argument behind it also posed an accessibility problem, which is where the more recent work of Heaton, Paulson, and Witt steps in. Their research simplifies the argument using an easy to understand analogy. Imagine a bag filled with 10 poker chips, nine worth $10 and one worth $100. While the average value of these chips is $19, consider the act of randomly drawing two chips repeatedly. This process mirrors how mutual funds operate, with managers selecting subsets from a broader group. The catch is that most draws won't include the $100 chip. So even though the average value across the two 10 chip combinations is $38, eight times out of 10, you'll end up with a pair worth only $20. This phenomenon mirrors the experience of fund managers choosing stocks from a benchmark. Only a handful will secure the high value stocks, leaving the majority of the industry buried in mediocrity, or worse. This illustration, while straightforward, is actually still more optimistic than the reality in the market. With thousands of stock combinations and the high likelihood of underperforming the average, waiting to hit the jackpot with a winner over time is an unfeasible strategy. While some funds might briefly outperform due to owning the stock of the moment, most will end up with returns below the average. This model also doesn't account for the potential of stocks to lose value. However, the instances of steep declines in most indexes are far less important than substantial gains. A key finding is the extreme asymmetry of returns. The exceptional performance of a small fraction of stocks is so crucial that it eclipses the fact that an average stock is historically a less attractive investment than a one-month treasury bill. Skewness matters at a practical level. The underlying statistical issue is underappreciated. Even in the absence of fees and expenses, the chances are high that you'll underperform. The research shows that roughly 70% of stocks underperform compared to a treasury bill, with larger companies generally offering a better performance rate. However, 
Even within the top 10% of the market by size, about 30% of companies yield smaller gains than the T-bills. The idea that fund managers need to pick winning stocks in order to outperform their benchmark isn't groundbreaking. After all, that's what they're paid to do. However, the crux of this line of research is that the structure of the market itself stacks the odds against successful selection for these winners. This doesn't mean that active managers are incompetent. Rather, they are up against a system with towering odds. With the increasing trend of investors shifting their assets from active to passive strategies, the pressure on stock pickers has never been more intense. Interestingly, despite an increase in the variation of individual stock returns since the last US presidential election, a situation often perceived as beneficial by active managers in selecting stocks, investors continued to withdraw funds from mutual funds in favor of exchange-traded funds. On a more personal note, this research might offer some comfort to fund managers. The degree of skewness fluctuates year on year, and 2022 was a particularly tough year for stock pickers. To put it into perspective, the average stock in the S&P 500 outperformed the median one by two percentage points, painting a picture quite similar to the poker chip analogy. In the diverse realm of the S&P 500, there are both soaring successes and disappointing downfalls. Take NVIDIA for instance. Despite being a technology company, it didn't grab headlines in the way that industry giants like Apple or Amazon regularly do. NVIDIA's primary product is graphic processing units, GPUs. The components powering high performance computing and other sophisticated electronic devices. However, in recent years, the demand for GPUs has surged dramatically. They've become crucial in an array of emerging AI applications. From mastering board games like Go, to detecting tuberculosis in X-ray images, and even aiding in the development of autonomous vehicles. Today, everyone seeks GPUs, and NVIDIA stands at the forefront of this burgeoning market. Consequently, NVIDIA's once under-the-radar stock has shot up dramatically, making it one of the best-performing stocks of the past decade. NVIDIA represents the quintessential winner stock that can power a benchmark's performance beyond the reach of the average active manager. The challenge, as every fund manager knows, lies in finding the next NVIDIA amidst a thousand of potential candidates. This hunt is not simply a contest of skill, but also a daunting challenge set by the very mathematics of equity markets. As we delve deeper into this mathematical reality, it becomes clear that the age-old debate of active versus passive investing is not as black as white as it seems. The underperformance of active managers may not be a simple testament to their lack of skill, but rather a reflection of the arduous task they face, a task underscored by the extreme skewness of equity market returns. So what does this mean for the average investor that doesn't have a fancy finance degree? While the process of picking individual stocks can be thrilling, particularly when you find the diamond in the rough, this video should underscore the tremendous challenge it represents, even for seasoned professionals. The key factors outlined, stock market unpredictability, the influence of a few winning stocks, skewed average returns, and the impact of fees, combined to create a daunting environment for those attempting to beat market performance consistently. For the average investor who may not hold a finance degree, these insights suggest that a more balanced strategy may be beneficial. While stock picking can form a part of your investment approach for its potential high returns, placing a significant portion of your investments in a well-diversified index fund could prove to be a prudent decision. This strategy provides broad exposure to the market, capturing the overall growth of the economy and reducing the risk and pressure associated with trying to identify the few standout performers. Ultimately, the data is clear. Trying to pick individual stocks will lose you money compared to a passive approach in the long term.